what's happening people welcome back to football therapy with me your host yeah and i hope you are doing well and welcome to another video today two videos in one day man is working hard but this is an interesting talking point and it's pretty much coming off the back of frank lampard doing his pre-match presser for the arsenal game I want to talk about strikers to you guys. Lampard said some sort of positive sounding stuff and you know what? I think Chelsea are going to sign someone in this transfer window. Shock! Horror! We'll get into what I want to talk about in just a moment but before we do a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so please do sub, hit the bell notifications icon and if you want to help a brother out please do like this video. Alright. Let's get into it. So Frank Lampard's done his pre-match presser for the Arsenal game. Positive news about Rhys James looking like he's okay and in contention for the Arsenal game, which is immensely good news. And predictably, Frank Lampard was asked loads about transfers, ins and outs. Obviously, he was asked about Olivier Giroud. He said, yes, the matter is the same. He looks like he wants to go or everyone. There's a high chance he will go, but it's just making sure the finalised sort of parts of the deal go through before he goes off to Inter, but expect that to probably happen before the window closes, certainly, maybe even in the next few days. No one really asked Lamps about a defender, but it was about forwards generally, because Frank Lampard came out after the Newcastle game and criticised Chelsea's ability to score goals, and in, I was going to say insinuated, but it wasn't even insinuated, he said, we need to strengthen essentially. It basically means we need signings. He sort of went on to say, look, we couldn't do business in the summer when we probably needed to. We can do business now. And not only do we still need to from the summer, like we found new problems that we need to resolve we need to sign some people to strengthen in the forward areas. So he was posed the question about Edison Cavani because obviously it's been confirmed that that was the president of PSG came out and said Cavani is asked to leave in this window. Now I thought this was a little bit like fanciful, like it's just a big player being available, you get linked to big clubs like Chelsea. But Lampard was asked about Edison Cavani and it was really interesting what he said. Without reading the quote, the gist is, you can go and read the quotes, the gist is he was pretty much saying, yeah, I really like Cavani, I love him, I think he's good at this, he's got a good attitude, dedication, work ethic. He basically went on to say how he could be a really positive player for the younger players at Chelsea, sort of backtracked a little bit and said, well, there's loads of players that could do that. But he did sort of take a few moments to wax lyrical about the big Uruguayan striker and then pretty much said, we'll see. Now, that's hugely positive. Chelsea have obviously been in negotiations and talks for people like Moussa Dembele, but when his name came up, Frank Lampard was like, yeah, he's in my head, but not, not really, like, I don't understand why you guys are still talking about him. But come off the hour when they pointed the mic in his face and talked about Edison Cavani, he reacted a lot more positively, and I think he'd be pushing Chelsea maybe to make this move happen. So, what do we think about that? Personally, I've always loved Edison Cavani. I know he's a bit older now, but his movement as it is, maybe was to a degree unparalleled in the game, like in the box in the area. He always gets away from his marker. Very, very strong. Amazing finisher, obviously. Superb. But maybe he's a little bit old. I was a little bit concerned that maybe he's just like old striker Giroud, old striker Cavani, but obviously his mobility should still be a lot better than Giroud's and maybe he will just be a better player profile for Frank Lampard's football. Cavani would probably need to appreciate that he wouldn't necessarily be starting striker. I know he'd understand his own player profile and accolades and he'd look at someone like Tammy Abraham and be like, come on, Edison Cavani, come on. But the fact is, maybe he would be happy to just sort of fight neck and neck with Tammy. Think about it, at the moment, Cavani is having loads of trouble getting into the PSG team because they've got so much firepower up front. Just in the centre forward position, you can play Mbappe or Icardi in front of him. So obviously, he's going to be struggling. He might see a move to Southwest London for like a six or 18 month contract period, a superb option for him. He can rotate with this young promising striker in Tammy Abraham, but also he'll see quality in the Chelsea side, know some of the names, you know, Christian Pulisic, he would of course have heard of Callum hudson Adoy because of all the Bayern Munich stuff. And there's other Spanish speaking players in the squad uh, and French speaking players in the squad as well. And I'm pretty sure Cavani must speak Italian as well because of Napoli. So he'll be able to speak to pretty much all the players of all the, you know, apart from probably English, but it, it, it could work. It could work, man. Right, so let me throw out some other theoreticals. Cavani is going to get snapped up in January by someone. 
Sure, it looks like Frank Lampard might want him, but apparently United have offered him a massive contract. They would pay him loads of money. And I'm telling you now, United will 100% pay him just as much money as Chelsea will, if not more, but they will 100% give him a longer contract than Chelsea would give him. Chelsea would give him at most an 18 month contract where United might give him like two or three years contract. So, and he'll probably fancy himself to maybe go into the United or Spurs team easier if he, you know, not sure Spurs will necessarily secure him, but they, they probably need him most with the injury to Harry Kane. Uh, maybe they'll give him a long-term contract as well. Who knows? Obviously, Jose Mourinho can speak Spanish and Italian and probably might get into his ear and be like, come to Tottenham. Still, we'll have to find out. But one of the biggest links of Edison Cavani throughout even last summer to the present day is his potential move to Atletico Madrid to meet up with Diego Simeone and to be honest that move seems the most perfect of them all. He just seems like the quintessential ultimate Simeone striker. Big strong, good finisher, good work rate. I just see that happening to be honest. For him that probably makes the most sense in or maybe maybe it does. I don't know because they are struggling at the moment Letty. But if, in terms of manager to player, it just seemed like such a perfect marriage, Cavani to Atletico Madrid. But anyway, that moves me on to the theoretical part of the video, where I want to talk about Diego Costa. 31 year old, so younger than Cavani I think now. He's just come back into fitness, Costa. Have huge problems on his return to Atletico Madrid. His goal scoring has been abysmal over there, it was awful. But one thing Costa always did at Chelsea was score goals, always. And this Newcastle game, and indeed a lot of these games of Chelsea have failed to score. Sure, everyone's saying, oh, we're missing that technical difference maker, the dribbler in the box, the superstar, Eden Hazard. But you know what? In many of these games in times past where Chelsea couldn't score and they ended up winning 1-0, Guess who scored that 1-0 goal? That's right, the ugly mad mad himself, Diego Costa. Could he be the perfect striker to play alongside and rotate with Tammy Abraham to get these goals? He, he scores goals in the Premier League. Like He must have scored like 60 Premier League goals or something like that. He, he's used to it, you know, he won Premier League titles. Dude can absolutely do it. And he's sure he's over the hill a little bit. He's 31, but it's not like he was a sprinter. He just needs to get in people's faces and score goals and Diego Costa will not have forgotten how to do that. So it's an interesting thought experiment. What if Cavani does indeed go off to Madrid to link up with Simeone and get a few years on the contract and Chelsea offer Diego Costa an 18 month contract to come back to South West London. He knows a few players there. Frank Lampard might enjoy it. Um, how would he feel about that? I think he always loved the Chelsea fans. So, Diego, 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 back at Stamford Bridge. I'm just saying, it's not too much of a forward thinking move, but in terms of offering something what this Chelsea team are missing, this young, naive Chelsea team, sure they leave everything on the pitch, but you need someone a bit dirty in that penalty area to just get his foot round it and find the finish in small spaces, which Diego Costa always used to do. Now, there are no particular links for Diego Costa back to Chelsea. I'm just saying there are links to Cavani, but there are links to Cavani to Tottenham, Man United, Madrid, you know, Atletico Madrid. So what if he did go to Atletico Madrid and Costa came back to Chelsea? How would people feel about that? Like I said, maybe just for 18 months. I'm backing it. I'd love it. Scenes. Scenes, mate. Diego Costa. Ugh. Imagine, oh, imagine. I know it's come too soon, but imagine if he did sign and we hadn't played Arsenal yet. He always loved playing against Arsenal, winding them up. Sigh. So, anyway. What do you reckon? It is really interesting and it's promising now from what Frank Lampard's been saying. He said nothing was imminent before. Now he's sort of saying, oh, nothing is absolutely imminent. It's kind of progressed a little bit in the way he's talking. I think he knows there's talks going on and a story, I have a feeling a story will break soon. Something that Frank Lampard obviously, obviously knows about, but that's been developing. And by the time the story breaks, I think by then it will be imminent. Chelsea are often really, really good at keeping transfer stories wrapped up until the last minute where we find out, oh look, David Luiz is in Cobham again. Oh look, Marcus Alonso's there. Do you know what I mean? So Chelsea are very good at wrapping up transfers. Frank Lampard keeps his uh, hand, I don't know what I was going to say then, his deck of cards, his cards close to his chest, 
And I think by the time you and me find out a, a transfer or a rumour, it might nearly be completed. So with that being said, you better make sure you stick around football therapy. Come back every single day, and I guess in some instances, multiple times in, in each day, because I'm going to be giving you updates as quick as possible of what's going on in this transfer window as it heats up a little bit more. So if you've enjoyed today's content, guys, please do like the video. And remember, if you've not yet subscribed to football therapy, please do hit the bell notifications icon like I said. Also, I want to take a moment here, I want to thank everyone who's been tuning in and watching the videos because obviously, as I'm sure you've all seen, the trajectory and sort of success of football therapy, especially lately, has been an immense one and I'm really, really grateful and humbled for how well things have been going. It's uh, quite a privilege to do something like this as a job now, which it is my job, and although I want to be professional, entertaining, and like a fun content creator, and informative as well, most importantly, I also want to take a moment sometimes to let you guys know that there's a sort of human side to this, and I am, although I work incredibly hard on videos, research, filming, editing, and all that sort of stuff, I do feel very privileged and humbled that I do have this opportunity to work in content creation for Chelsea and football stuff. So I guess I want to say thank you. <laughs> and on that as well, follow me on social media, at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Remember to check back. You enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.